Hi, I recently bought this VFD module from eBay, and the seller must be quite into electronics himself because he had included the pinout and basic operation along with the eBay listing. So my plan in this short video is to wire it up with an Arduino and see if I can get it to work. The model number for this vacuum fluorescent display is CU. 226 SCPB-T26A, which is made by Noritaki Itron, and they make many similar VFDs which are used in many appliances in consumer market. As you can see, I have the uh, data sheets for their similar display modules here, but um, I could not find any data sheet uh, the information on this specific model. So we'll have to see if the seller's instructions are accurate or not. Now that I have looked through these uh, different data sheets, and it appears that most of the Noritaki's uh, VFDs operate in quite similar fashion. Now, of course, certain features might not be present on certain models, but nonetheless, the general operating principle is mostly identical. So that's the good news. One thing I noticed while going through the uh, data sheets is that uh, most of the modules have some sort of uh, jumper settings to set the display in either parallel or serial driving mode. Now, I do not see any jumpers on this board, and certainly not uh, anywhere I can see. So I'm guessing that I have to drive this in parallel mode, at least to start with. And so I came up with this uh, adapter board, and my plan is to uh, plug in an Arduino Nano here once uh, I'm done with the programming and will drive this. So if you look at the back here, I have the signal wired up. And uh, the only thing I wired up slightly differently than what uh, uh, the seller was uh, recommending is that I took a look at all the pins for the positive connections. So this is, by the way, from the eBay listing. And pin 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, uh, the seller says is all an 18, sorry, and all connected to plus 5 volts. But on most of the data sheets, I only see that 2, 4, 6, 8 are connected to uh, 5 volts and the other pins are to the ground. I think it may or may not be a problem for the 10 through 18 pins to be connected to 5 volts, but uh, temporarily, if you look at the uh, connection here, I uh, left them out uh, just to be safe. As I mentioned, the other data sheets that I've seen are only for the 2, 4, 6, 8 pins to be connected to the positive. So that's what I'm gonna start with. But, uh, and you, you look at here, uh, I just wired it conveniently so that uh, the data pin uh, D7 through D0 connects to the uh, D12 through five Arduino pins uh, back here. So that when I plug it in, we can program that later. But right now uh, I haven't uh, plugged in the Arduino yet. So we'll just, uh, uh, put this in and uh, power it up to see if we get any display. So now I have the ground connected to the 5 volt power supply and let me uh, hook up the power supply see what we got on the display. And as expected we can see that we have a cursor displayed and of course right now there's nothing there because we don't have the Arduino uh, or the program installed onto the Arduino yet. So uh, so that's the basic, uh, at least we know that the display is working. So of course, these kind of displays have a built-in self-diagnostic test upon powering up. If we short, uh, in this dis specific display, is a pin 25 and 26, if we short them together. So let's uh, give that a shot. So now I'm going to uh, hook this up. Actually, let me use my left, uh, well, right hand here. It's a little bit awkward, but uh, let's see here if we can get that. So I'm going to short the 25 and 26, use my tweezers. Hopefully that's making a good contact. And let, oops, uh, let me uh, power it on. Ah, on, let me try it again. Yep, so as you can see, that is indeed uh, displaying a self-diagnostic uh, testing. So, so far, so good. So my next step is uh, I'm going to uh, plug in the Arduino and uh, uh, write some code to see if we can communicate this with the, uh, the protocol that uh, is uh, provided in the data sheets.
So here on the screen is the Arduino program that I came up with. And, uh, and also on the other screen, you can see the setup. I have here the, uh, the VFD board and it's plugged into the breakout board that we made earlier, on which we plugged in an Arduino Nano. And uh, so far, we only have the wiring done, which I showed you earlier. So now let's go to the program and take a look at how everything is connected here. So the D7 through D0, which are the data bus uh, for the display, uh, the parallel output, sorry, the parallel, parallel input is connected to the digital pin 12 through digital pin 5. And I uh, put those in an array, which we'll see that simplifies the operation a little bit. And here we have the control pins. Uh, 4 is for write, and 13 is for chip select. And uh, A and D is for data and uh, commands. And RD, this is for reading back, which I'm not using, but nevertheless, for completeness, I included that into the, uh, the sketch here. So we also have some commands. Now, there are more commands than these, but these are the ones I think are supported by this particular unit. And the other ones uh, I have tried, and they are not supported. But if you can, if you wanted to experiment, you can uh, go to one of the, uh, the data sheets that I will link on my website, and you can find out the more detailed commands that are available for these kind of uh, VFD displays. So to initialize the pins here, and I'm setting all the uh, uh, the data pins to be the Arduino output, which is the input into the display module. And uh, so here is the key is the set data. What I'm doing here is basically I'm uh, the, the function takes a byte, and the, the byte is a uh, bit shifted into the the array of the for each individual pins here. And uh, I, what I could have done is to use a port instead of uh, uh, shifting each individual bit. But the problem is that uh, the port does not quite line up uh, nicely uh, according to the pin layout here. So I'm using the uh, the bit instead here. And uh, to write data, basically we pull down the uh, the AD line and uh, we pause the uh, the write line. And of course we do the uh, chip select here and we set the data onto the data bus and uh, here you go. So then you can write it onto the data bus. Now, according to the data sheet, we have to have some delays and the, the delay can be calculated or you can uh, simply read back using the uh, read command to see certain thing a bit sorry, to see if the line is busy, but that's a little bit more complicated. And by delaying one micro, uh, one millisecond rather, is more than sufficient for most of the operations here. So in fact, uh, just by doing this, you can eliminate all those uh, different readbacks. Of course, this uh, limits the maximum uh, command you can write to the uh, screen, but for our uh, applications, for most of the applications, in fact, it doesn't really matter. So there are a few other handy commands that I included here. One is to reset the screen, basically to clear everything out and make it blank. Another one is to move the cursor to a specific point. Now for this one is a 2x40, uh, where is 2x20. But anyway, so nevertheless, this is a uh, single number. So if you make it uh, longer than the first line, then it will wrap to the second line. And so here I'm basically what I, my test program uh, is doing here is to uh, to set it up as and listen to the serial port and whatever I type into the serial port will be echoed onto this display at least that's the plan. And by the way, there are two commands here. Uh, basically, I'm setting it to the horizontal scroll. So hopefully, once the display is uh, reaching the uh, to the bottom line here, it's gonna wrap it. Uh, sorry, not going to wrap, but it's going to shift the display content to the first line and continue displaying on the second. So at least that's according to the data sheet what it should be doing. And also I'm going to turn off the cursor because uh, the er cursor display is a little bit distracting. I think it's a little bit more attractive without the cursor. So anyway, that's the plan. And uh, you can see that the program has uh, pretty much uh, nothing. We just read echo the, uh, the serial input directly to the output here. So let's upload the program right now and we'll give it a test.
And what we should see is, yep, the, uh, the cursor disappeared because we're setting the cursor off. So now to test it, of course, we could use the serial terminal uh, associated with the uh, Arduino IDE. But I wanted to be able to uh, echo locally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just fire up a serial program here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the port here. Uh, I'm going to select the USB port. And everything will be set as default, 9600 volt. And what I'm going to do is also I'm going to let it uh, uh, echo locally. So that when I'm typing on the keyboard, you hopefully can see what is uh, being typed in this display and hopefully on the VFT if our programming is done right. So let's give it a start. So I'm going to say this is a test. So far, so good. So as you can see that uh, as we're typing, it uh, started to um, get to the next, li next line. And uh, of course, uh, the backspace doesn't work. But you get the idea. So now I can just keep typing and uh, everything is uh, displayed onto the VFD. So that is pretty uh, straightforward. And I'm going to include this uh, code listing on my website. So for those who are interested, definitely you can check it out. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, learned something new. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And remember to subscribe, share, and I will catch up with you next time.